You're watching Morning Live. Thanks so much for joining us. Now, much talk about appointments and uh, cabinet and executive council appointments. And the Northwest Premier, Professor Job Mohoro, announced his executive committee yesterday. And they will take their oath of office today, followed by an induction process for all appointed MECs. Last year, several departments were placed under administration. 14 of the 22 municipalities in the province are also under administration. And Premier Mohoro joins us now live from from our SABC studios in Mahikeng to talk about some of the challenges in his province. Uh, Professor Mohoro, thanks so much for your time this morning and welcome to Morning Live. Uh, thank you very much. So firstly, uh, just to get a sense, how are you feeling about the tough job that lies ahead? You've already had a taster of it. So how are you feeling going forward? Well, I, I could to recognize the immensity of the task. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, I think uh, I'm uh, fairly highly enthused uh, for struggle. So uh, we saw the cabinet uh, that was announced. Uh, just talk us through some of the considerations that you went through when you were making the selection of your executive members, especially given the challenges in some of the critical portfolios in your province. Uh, well, uh, the first uh, is a question of uh, uh, proven capability and experience uh, for purpose of continuity. Uh, we also considered uh, a gender balance issue, as you can see, uh, as to has six uh, women and four men. Uh, a question of uh, uh, generation mix. Uh, where we are required to have at least 20% young people, which we have complied with. Uh, there's also consideration with regard to geographic spread. Um, so it has really been a combination of all these factors uh, that uh, were taken. So uh, do you believe that the team, the executive team that you have appointed, would be able to turn things around? This is a province that is under administration. You have 22 municipalities uh, in this province, and out of those, 14 are under administration, uh, various departments as well. Do you have uh, the belief that this team could actually make a difference? Oh, yes. Uh, I, 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 be, I believe so. As I say, I, I have taken a very uh, hard look at uh, previous uh, performance over the past years, uh, especially recent performance. And uh, I have made uh, my vision very clear to them. Uh, I've made it very clear to them uh, with regard to the culture of work. Uh, the whole question of Batupili principles. And I have every belief that uh, uh, if I continue to, to start the direction uh, as I've been doing um, and given their capabilities, but perhaps above all, uh, given the fact that we have the president we have in this country, who from each level uh, continue uh, to show us direction. Uh, I think uh, uh, taking cognizance of all these but we really should. The people have spoken, the people, the people were very loud uh, with regard to their frustration, their disappointment in us uh, during the uh, uh, campaign for the recently passed election. And uh, there is no place to hide. We just have to respond to the dying needs of uh, Professor Mahora, what is going to be your priority? Because corruption is one of the issues that you need to deal with. You spoke about lifestyle audits, saying that this is perhaps a more effective way of uh, uncovering some of the corruption. How so? And what will you prioritize? Well, priorities, uh, I think there are two set of factors. The one uh, is the governing party's manifesto. Uh, in addition to that, uh, other issues, as I said earlier, uh, that were highlighted uh, during the uh, campaign. Now, during the campaign, uh, most of the issues that were pointed out to us 
by the people in the province relates to local government issues. And as we all know, uh, in about 18 months' time, uh, we would have another election. So a combination of uh, um, private system the manifesto as well as um, local government issues, uh, particularly those I elected, would constitute uh, private. But what uh, continues to be a, a very serious priority in our province, especially rural areas, another issue within rural areas would be rural roads to enable access to social basic services, uh, cooling to cleaning. Um, the roads are in a very, very bad condition. Most of the roads in the rural areas are in a very bad condition. And we need to restructure the way we plan and budget uh, in the provision of rural roads. Well, seemingly, this is going to be a the, tough task. Uh, question. It's a tough task. And, and there's no question about it. It's certainly going to be. Yes, yes, very much so. Professor Mohoro. Uh, the SABC, one of our investigative journalists, um, has just uh, uncovered through a whistleblower that um, with regard to three facilities in your health department, you touched on clinics uh, just a moment ago, and apparently five million rand was spent on a ribbon cutting ceremony. You spent about 300,000 rand on a marquee. And um, it went as far as uncovering uh, malfeasance that speaks to uh, one 340 milliliter can of cool drink costing 30 rand. And the MEC, when asked about this, when confronted with this information, said he was surprised. And this happened about a month ago, just a month ago. So what are we to make of that? Why should we then have confidence that the MEC and, of course, by extension, you, Mr. Premier, will be able to turn the situation around, given that these things are still happening in the province? Well, I have I've picked up uh, that kind of information and I've asked uh, for a report. Uh, as recently as yesterday, um, I, I spoke to the MEC and I should be receiving the report today. I would be able to respond to your question more firmly uh, once I've received the report. Um, you know, the outi alter and patem rule uh, is always important to such issues. There have been allegations, and I must get a report and take the necessary act. I can assure you, I can assure all the viewers that uh, I'll do what is best. Of another five million rand spent on a thank you ceremony to uh, members of the South African National Defence Force. Surely, in a province where people are struggling to get um, drinking water, which is a basic human right, you can ill afford to be spending that type of money on thank yous, uh, especially given that you have 14 uh, municipalities under administration, your province is under administration. So, uh, Professor Mohoro, this is happening on your watch. Well, uh, I, 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 I've heard that as well, and uh, it's, it's part of the report that I've, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for. I spoke uh, to the administrator, uh, the person who has been deployed as part of Section 100, uh, and I did so day before yesterday, and um, I, I'll, I'll get the report, and I'll be back with you uh, to report A, whether or not I've been able to confirm that and B. Uh, given the confirmation, what action I have taken. So are you uh, willing to give us a time frame as to when you will come back and report back on this matter? Well, as early as next week, I should, be, I, I should have gotten to the bottom of and, and, and we certainly shall follow up on that, um, Mr. Premier. But uh, going back uh, to other issues in the health department, and there were quite a few. There was the Mediosa uh, issue. Then there was the uh, Nepo Data Dynamics issue. What has happened to the officials who, uh, when uh, last we heard, were suspended over these uh, allegations of uh, mispropri impropriety? What has happened to those officials? Well, uh, with regard to depot dynamics, unfortunately, 
Uh, those that have been suspended uh, and are currently going through a disciplinary process, for one reason or the other, they've really been prolonging uh, this process. Um, I will be taking the whole package uh, to the NPA and uh, insisting on more urgent uh, action. Uh, I, I want to put it on record that we as government, as soon as we were in a position that best is so we have concluded the investigation. I have reported it's been quite a while now since I've reported. But remember, uh, there are other issues, uh, such as the HOC, uh, such as the SIU, uh, to whom we have referred these matters. But even before we refer matters to them, we would report that the HOC were in this province um, early last year. Um, and it's regrettable that the process is taking so long. In addition to taking this report to the NPA, uh, I'll be engaging once more with the general, general the bear response for all. Are you, uh, insist are you able to share with us? And finality. Are you able to share with us, uh, Premier, exactly what the holdup is? Uh, because I actually took a look at when those Hawks raids happened last year, um, and it was almost exactly a year ago as we speak right now. So what exactly is the holdup? Well, I, I, that's exactly why I want to engage in person with General Lebea or Paul uh, to ask precisely the question. So at this stage, you're not sure? Well, I can only uh, confirm uh, uh, you know, on matters that I have direct control over uh, and uh, with regard to others that I handle by other issues, I just have to continue insisting a negative. And, uh, of course, uh, when the walks conducted that raid, one of the other matters when they uh, raided the Premier's office was about that uh, 1.5 million rand worth of cattle that the, uh, your predecessor, uh, Premier Supra Mahumapelo, was alleged to have given to former President Jacob Zuma as a gift. So can you give us any further updates on that situation? Uh, yes, uh, I, I can. Uh, we, we, we have been uh, following up uh, on this. And I think in about a week uh, or two, uh, we should be able to come up with a more definitive uh, a progress report with regard to whether or not the allegations were true and to what extent we've been able to confirm these. Uh, it, it is really unfortunate that um, it has taken so long for us to really uh, get uh, to, to the bottom of this. But it's something uh, that I'm constantly uh, pursuing until we get to the bottom of it. So uh, coming back to current issues and uh, during that uh, investigative uh, piece that uh, one of our reporters did in the Northwest province, uh, the Premier, uh, rather the um, MEC for Health, uh, he also spoke there about issues of um, malfeasance with regard to security guards and security contracts. Now, I understand as we speak right now that uh, security guards are actually on strike today. Are you aware of that, Mr. Premier? Yes, uh, I'm aware uh, of, uh, of the strike which relates to questions of payment. And uh, I will be talking to the MSQ who I've been talking to uh, as to, you know, what resolution, how far we are from resolving this matter. I think one of the concerning issues, and it's extremely disconcerting, uh, Professor Mohoro, is uh, when you have an administration that says we are aware of these problems we are aware of the maladministration and the corruption and the malfeasance but seemingly doesn't have any sort of solution to these problems is that fair comment um not necessarily not necessarily uh, remember sakina we have just agreed that as early as next week uh, I'm quite happy to come back to you. You are asking, you are raising questions about matters uh, that are not news to me. 
about matters that I've pick, picked up recently, just as much as you and other members of the public have. And uh, I am in the process of getting back to the bottom of it. So in all fairness, uh, let's uh, reverse this matter next uh, so that uh, uh, we should test your observations as to whether or not there is a stop. And I'm loath to point this out again, Professor Mohoro, but we just spoke about several cases that were being investigated. We spoke about the hawks coming in, conducting raids, and yet nothing has happened a year, and in some instances even more than a year ago. So why, again, should we have any sort of confidence that this time around there will be some movement and people will be held accountable? Uh, Sakina, in all fairness, let's deal with let's let's deal with the uh, the Nepo dynamics issue. When you and I spoke about this, it had not been long since I came into office, and at the time when we spoke, Tina officials had already been placed on suspension. We have a constitution, which we are all proud of. We have the Labour Relations Act with very progress that we're all proud of. Whether we like it or not, there are a number of smart people out there who are able to play all kinds of delaying tech. And the law is simply the law, and you always have to operate within the law. Now, one of the interventions that I'm contemplating is the kind of operation we had in 2010 during the Stockholm World Cup, where an offense is committed, and immediately there's the facility to deal with the offense. That's what we need in the country. Well, Professor Job Mohoro, thank you so much for your time uh, speaking to us uh, this morning, uh, the Premier of the Northwest Province. Quite a few problems there, and of course the Premier promises that he will give us feedback on these next week. But for now, it's time for the latest news at 8 with Leanne.